Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 6 of Rustic Waters, the villager merchant takeover of my base is continuing. And I think I want to do something about that. In fact, there's a couple of small problems I want to fix in my base today. First is the fact that, you know, there are 20 million villagers, and second, oh look, now we have 20 million and two villagers. And second is the fact that this creosote oil tank always fills up. At first I thought I could just break it to, you know, void a corner of it and then place it back, but apparently these tank can you move so I can place this? You. Um, but these creosote tank or these uh, open blocks tanks actually retain their contents. So uh, I'm planning on switching over to, well, for one, I think uh, I'm going to need a trash can to avoid excess. Um, these fluid conduits send to nearest first, I believe, as they're, or is, is it configurable or no? But I'm pretty sure uh, I can use a dense fluid duct. Actually, we can't craft these, can we? Ah, they don't even show up in JEI. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they have a nearest first behavior. So I think if I just put a trash can there, that'll fix it. But I also want like a larger storage in a single block. So I'm going to try to make a portable tank. Because I think, whoops, not that. Because I think we do have the uh, technology for these things now. Ooh, fancy, we just have to make some aluminum. But yeah, um, our chef rat can cook it, and we just have to mix stuff together to make it. All right, uh, you know what? Let's start with that because it's easier. So uh, I'm going to have to cook up a batch of aluminum, which is that tin, silver, and glowstone. The worst part about making these alloys is definitely the fact that you have to crank the ingots down to dust. Can't wait till you can get a sagno to do this for us. I tried various ways to uh, improve the grindstone with like automated users and acceleration wands, but uh, the crank seems to break if it's ever interacted with with a fake user. Um, and acceleration winding the grindstone while I was hitting the crank didn't seem to work either. So, uh, oh well, I managed to pulverize our tin and silver. And oh cool, I didn't even need my spare tools. That's our lubium dust. So let me get this smelting. While this smelts though, I want to make something pretty cool. Uh, why are you all, all these stupid villagers keep pushing my rat off center? Because if he's, eh, that's good enough. If he's too far off center, you know, his items don't get caught. Anyways, uh, cook those into ingots for me. So while that lumium will allow us to make the tank, um, we can now make these conversion kits. So these conversion kits are actually very easy to make. Uh, this distiller's grain is just a bunch of leaves. This petrothium dust we have to buy for now, because I don't have a way of getting basalts powder yet, I think. Right, the two spawners I had were not basalts. Yeah, but um, one of these villagers sells that. There we go. So this guy sells uh, 16 dust for 200 bucks, which is fine. We can also buy the kit itself for 2,500 bucks. But once we have the basalts powder, we can make these polymer sheets. And uh, actually, what's the other... Oh wait, we can make polymer sheets without it. We can just use rosin. No need. So I don't even need to spend 200 bucks on the guy. Um, and then Endarium, we can craft five ingots into a gear for now. And uh, Endarium ingots come from having our chef rat smelt Endarium blend. And this is as easy as mixing together Ender Pearls, which our mob farm makes, Platinum, which we just got from the uh, Nether, and some manner of pulverized lead. So I need to pulverize some lead and platinum and then we can uh, make endarium. And incidentally trying to uh, you know, processing the platinum through the grindstone is also how we can get the best yields out of it. I think it's uh, something like 1.5, 1.6 on average. Um, so yeah, more grinding I guess. So I went to check our loot to get ender pearls and I noticed uh, we have a second water candle. No clue where it came from. I looked online briefly and it seems like uh, it's a bug in the cyclic mod where water candles sometimes just duplicate themselves. I don't know. Uh, not like the first one was doing much work, so not like the second one's going to do much either. Anyways, let's grab some ender pearls. And uh, I'll, while I'm here, I may as well I'll grab any uh, anything else that interests me, you know, loot, etc. I've been manually clearing, whoopsies, clearing out bows too. Uh, at some point I'll set up a proper storage system for this, you know, that doesn't pick up bows in the first place, but looks like that's all we got. A hair over a stack of ender pearls. Not too bad. 
Sometimes they hide in the hoppers too, but stupid bows. All right, that'll do. There was a lot of money in those six-ish chests. So uh, I had, what, 1779? After storing the money, I have 2,000 and change. That's like 250 bucks in those six chests. I like it. All right, so now we can mix these three together to get Endarium. Broke a beaker. Darium and uh, should be able to smelt this in our rat. Hey there, buddy. Why do you have a plate? Oh, I see what happens. The last item of a type, because he only throws items because it doesn't stack with the one he has in his hand. The last one he holds on to, but since he knows how to turn ingots into plates, he turns the last one into a plate. Also, I have this small problem where Enderman leak out of my mob farm. Uh, mostly I just leave them alone, but there's a lot of them, and sometimes it makes leaving them alone a little difficult. Oh well, I live with both villagers and Endermen now, I guess. So with our Lumium, we can make a portable tank. And with our Endarium, we can turn that into gears. Oh, what table is that made in? Blacksmith. Let's make four for now. And I can turn that into a kit by making one of these. I need rosin. All right. A half dozen workbenches later. Conversion kits. Nice. Uh, I'll hang on to those for now. So let's go set this up. So one of the other reasons I don't like these open blocks tanks, you can't pick up their contents with a high capacity bucket, like the diamond bucket or the jerry can, which I think is like a 16 bucket bucket. Um, yeah, so that makes it not terribly useful. So uh, I guess we'll go out with the old and with the new, right? And right now these are full-ish, and I can transfer their contents, I guess, to uh, the new portable tank if I care. Um, can you not be in the way? Thank you. All right, so we can put that there, upgrade it to don't know, my wallet, upgrade it to resonant tier. That holds 500 buckets, I believe, and can I, yeah, I can do this to empty these out. Cool. And then this tank should be able to interact, yeah, with uh, these things. So I guess the jerry can is a 10 bucket bucket. But the advantage of this is that I can just craft like so, which makes crafting um, creosote that much easier. And in fact, I believe I can actually pick up this tank. Uh, I need a wrench for that, but... I can put that tank here in the center and make creosote very or make treated wood very easily. What's all this treated wood for? Drawers, of course. So the basic drawer, first of all, it holds 96 stacks by default, which is quite a bit. Um, but it's made using treated wood and some metal fasteners. So uh, once I have drawers, I can switch our you know our sieving system or sif sifting sieving what whatever it's called. This uh, thing down here straining system instead of storing their items in a bunch of double chests i can store them into drawers looking at our drawer options again while uh, basic drawers hold 96 stacks per the two by twos actually hold 32 stacks per drawer um per like quadrant which means that uh if you use the two by two drawers and just put all four as the same item you actually put more items per drawer as basic drawers so uh, i think i'm just like they're basically the same cause right they just take four extra chests I'm just going to do this. It gives us more flexibility. Um, we can put more items in the... Um, like, we can put all four items in the same... Like, all four slots, same item to have more storage. Or we can put different items uh, depending on our needs. So, we need a hammer. Here we go. 16 2 by 2 drawers. And we need a drawer controller, which... Uh, a lot of stuff here, but I think everything, most of the worst parts we already have pre-crafted. Can you not stand up, I think? Yeah, like we have transmission coils, you know, we have the wire. Um, we could buy it, but I think it costs a lot, and I don't even know which vendor has it. So, um, yeah. While I'm here, though, I do need a few item conduits. Do you have item conduits? You are the Ender Isle Merchant, after all. Huh. Looks like you have every conduit type but item conduits. That makes you not terribly useful. All right, get out of here. One drawer controller. You know what? While I'm here, I may as well make a couple more. And two. 
I don't know what the second one's for yet, but I'm sure I'll use it. Four controllers are one of those things, you know, you can never have too many of. Now let's see about making a few item conduits just to move stuff around. Conduit binder is more or less a regular recipe, except done in a chemist workshop, that's easy. The tricky part though are these item pipes. So this has to be made with adhesive, which is bone meal and is there, oh, okay, I guess it's not that bad. Um, they're all pretty easy recipes. I'll just do this, bone meal and carbonate blend in a chemist workshop. It seems I've, uh, I'm wrong again. This happens a lot. This uh, recipe, I thought that was just sand. That's not sand, that's endstone. So uh, clay, gravel, and sand, very easy. Endstone, less easy. I don't think there's a... Let's see. Yeah, I don't see an easy, you know, cheaty way for me to get to it. So uh, I have to go to the end. Now, good news is, you see that marker there? I found an end portal while exploring at one point. Bad news is, I don't know if I'm ready to take an ender dragon. I don't really have armor or... Well, I have potions and stuff. You know what? Let's think about it. You know what? I'm gonna go for it. My plan is to uh, actually hearthstone out. So uh, I'm not going to kill the Ender Dragon. I'm just gonna go there, grab some endstone, and leave. So I brought a excavator with me. Brought a couple moving wands um, because I suspect that there will once again be spawners in the portal room and we can, uh, you know, with a moving wand we can bring those with us. Who knows, maybe they'll be useful mobs to have around. Anyways, I have to swim 500-ish meters more. Here we are. The end portal room is... Oh, I wonder, are the eyes filled? It looks like they are good. I forgot to bring uh, Eyes of Ender. But um, it's basically the nether portal room, except, you know, uh, with an end portal up top. And there's still mobs here. And treasure. Did I bring food? Yeah, I did. Ooh, good choice. Stupid mobs. All right, anyways, I'm going to light up and uh, clear out the spawners in this place. You know, now that I'm here, I realize there's a problem with hearthing out. If I hearth out, my uh, my Seamoth stays here, and I came here with it. So uh, I think, I don't know where that mob is, it's probably above. I think what I'm actually just going to do then is uh, cannibalize the endstone that, can, that makes up this portal. Um, and then later I'll have to come up with a better way of getting here that doesn't involve taking the Seamoth, because... Basically, any way I leave, I le I'll end up leaving my Seamoth behind, right? Whether I hearth out or I uh, I take the portal, because the portal will put me at my spawn point. So, um, yeah, basically, I'm going to have to get here without using my Seamoth later. But for now, uh, I don't need that much endstone. I think just cannibalizing the stuff that's here that's made of endstone will be enough. Also, you know, I have two more mob spawners now that I can dash away for later. I'll put those two spawners I grabbed on the ocean floor here, just beneath my base. That way they, uh, they'll be here and available, but they won't be in the way. They're also both blitz spawners, but they were, like, but there were, uh, blitzes and I think even a basalt in the, uh, in the building. So I don't know if I missed other spawners or if these spawners can actually spawn all three types of mobs. You know, all of the thermal blitz variants, or, uh, whatchamacallit them variants, you know? In any event, uh, I'm going to leave them there for later. I was able to get 20 endstone, so the shaped recipe. Um, yeah, so now we can make a small batch of conduit binder. It'll, again, it's not a lot, but it'll be enough to uh, make the handful of item conduits we need for now. While we wait for that conduit binder to smelt, let's make a satchel. So a basic satchel doesn't have much room in it, but we can use that conversion kit we made earlier to upgrade it into a resident satchel. So basic satchel has a single row, whereas I think this is the recipe. A resident satchel has five rows. And because uh, you don't actually, you know, items in your inventory... Oops. Not where that goes either. 
whatever. Um, items in your satchel don't take durability loss when you die, and you don't lose it. You know, you basically everything has soul bound. You can just store all your excess stuff in here, and uh, it's safe to to lug around everywhere. It's like I can keep my wallet in there, and I'll never lose it. Um, yeah, it's it's essentially an inventory extension. I can also enchant it later when I get access to enchanting to give it, I think, up to like three or four more rows. All that comes together in the form of 18 item conduits. That'll do for now. And I have some leftover binders for later. Um, so with this, we can rebuild our sifting system slightly to have uh, to store all the items not in these chests, but into, you know, a bunch of drawers. Now all that's left is moving the items into the drawers. Um, I wonder, do I want a handful of compacting drawers for like the redstone? Maybe? Hmm. Eh, for the time being, I think it's fine to just store everything in normal drawers. Uh, the difficulty with compacting drawers is that like the regular one holds 24 stacks, but it only compacts once. Whereas the one that compacts twice only holds 8 stacks. And drawer upgrades are actually, you can't make them, you have to buy them. So upgrades are hard to come by. Um, given that, I'll just store everything in regular drawers for now. Oh, here's a slightly unexpected problem. Item conduits don't connect to the sides of strainers. Um, I'm going to test to see if they connect to the bottom. Hopefully they do. If they don't, then uh, maybe you just can't automatically extract from strainers. Let's see. So that's not connected, but I did move and wand it there. Let me see if it connects with... Yeah, so maybe strainers cannot be automated from... Let me try a hopper, maybe. All right, thankfully, it looks like a hopper can still pull items out of a strainer. So I'll just put each of the strainers on hoppers and then use item conduits to extract out of the hoppers. I expect that. Oh, yeah, that should work without issue. So this way, the items are automatically pulled out of the strainers into the hopper and then automatically pulled from the hopper into the drawer system. Well, cool. all that's left is uh, I wonder if these accept um, hopper input for the strainer itself or the filter. Let's see. Well, I definitely went in. Yes, it does. Cool. So um, I can, you know, I'm just going to set up four hoppers here and uh, use regular chests because uh, I like, I'll, I'll put a bunch of uh, regular strainers, you know, up on top of these and a bunch of um, dense strainers here. And that way I don't even have to manually refill our strainers. Functionally the same, but I turned it upside down because uh, if I put the chests here at the level where the strainers are, I actually can't open them. Cool. So this more or less automates our strainers. I still have to manually craft these actual meshes. Um, there's basically no way to fully automate the crafting of the mesh, but uh, I can just batch craft these you know, in significant quantities in one go and then not have to worry about them again. I don't know exactly what to do with our other drawer controller, wherever I put it. Uh, we can set up another drawer system to handle all of the tree outputs. There we go. Much neater than having like six double chests up there, right? Um, again, if I need more room, I can just add more drawers. Now that I now that uh, the treated wood is easy to make, drawers are super easy to make. So, awesome. Now that we've cleaned up a little bit, uh, it's still a mess here, but it's, I mean, slightly less messy than before, right? I think it's time we deal with our merchant problem. For starters, let's see about getting name tags. So previously I said that, you know, we can't craft them, which is still true. However, I believe we can buy them from a market. So the market, let's put it, uh, I don't know, right here. Yeah, it lets us buy seeds and, among other things, name tags. I'm going to scan through here to see if there's anything besides that that I really want. We can buy basically every seed and every tree sapling, um, but I don't need any of those for now. So uh, I'm going to go buy name tags. I don't know exactly how many I need, but I know 15 is enough. And I have plenty of emeralds because these came from the, uh, you know, all those chests we found. Um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and name one of every type of villager, and eventually I'll build a place for them to live. Like this one, I'll name him, I don't know, uh, I guess I need an anvil for this too, right? I'll name him the uh, Quark Villager, or Cyclic rather, because that's what he sells. There we go. The practical effect of naming them is kind of twofold. First of all, they won't despawn when I leave the base anymore. And second of all, I can see, you know, more or less at a glance what their name, or what they sell. I don't have to open their UI. 
Fortunately, the name seems to disappear if I'm more than a few blocks away, but it's still better than, you know, which villager are you, which villager are you, etc, etc. By this point, I'm a good, like, ten minutes into this process, and I think I've gotten every merchant, with the exception of the potions merchant. And maybe there's one more? Um, someone on the Discord server said there's 13, but uh, potions would make number 12 for me. So... Uh, at this point, though, I feel like I would have seen number 13. I don't know. In any event, I'm still waiting for the last one or two, because uh, the ones that spawn keep being ones that I already have. Aha! A potions merchant. So I think that covers all of them. Um, at this point, then, what I'm going to do is take the moving wand and place, oopsies, place the spawner once again with our other spawners down here where it won't spawn anything. As I hope it doesn't. And uh, if we find that our merchants die later for whatever reason, I can bring it back. But I'm going to kill all the other merchants that don't have name tags in our base. And our base should be a lot less cluttered. At some point, I'll also build like a specific room for them. Just so that they're not you know, sharing rooms with us. But uh, I don't feel like building right now. Moving on, and in accordance with today's theme, I want to clean up our mob farm loot system a bit. Right now, you know, all of our stuff is just going to this, all these chests, but they're uh, basically full. And while I could add more chests, um, I'm still like manually disposing of bows, uh, yada yada yada. So why don't we also set this up into a drawer system um, that can, you know, automatically handle our loot. Now, since we're going to have to dispose of bows, we're going to need item filters, and because we need to ignore... Uh, damages in metadata um, we're gonna need the advanced item filter however the advanced item filter doesn't have a recipe so I have to go buy it from our ender IO merchant who in theory are named and thus should be easy to find there you are how much is a advanced item filter that's not bad uh, you can buy advanced big for 100 bucks sign me up yeah, all these item filters are the same cost, so I may as well buy the best one, right? Advanced big item filter. Nice. Much as before, we're just going to fill in the drawers with our items. Um, the trash can here, the trash void, will have a filter set on it for bows. Ignore metadata, ignore damage, ignore MBT data. Basically, if it's like enchanted or whatever. Um, I don't think we've gotten any enchanted bows, but... Uh, It'll, you know, they're all damaged, of course. Anyway, so that'll just take care of voiding it all. And then we'll just have to put items in the drawers. The way this is set up now, items without a home will just wait in this chest. Um, I actually don't have a copy of, like, the various uh, loot bags to add to the wall yet. So that's where they'll sit for now. Uh, the items that are filtered away will go into here. So far, that's only bows, but if I add spawners into the farm, maybe there'll be other items later. And then everything else goes into the wall. And with that, I think our base cleanup for today is done. Uh, from the inside, it's really no cleaner than it was, but it's a lot more functional and there's a lot less chests. All very good things. So, next thing I want to do is try to work our way towards our next base expansion key. Looking at our options, I think the one that's closest is the one at the end of our Seamoth questline. And, uh... We can make an energetic infuser, but I don't think we can actually use it because we can't make RF yet. But in any event, let's uh, make this so that we can unlock the next quest. Um, I'd like to see what it takes to unlock the next key. Alright, so I made our energetic infuser. Again, I, I highly doubt we can use it because we can't actually generate RF. So you'll live there for now. The point of this is to... Uh, I can't even put the augment in yet. The point of it is to recharge the batteries on our Seamoth. Um, but yeah, right now we're just, they're effectively single-use batteries. I try to understand what this quest means. So it's telling us to go to an underwater village and check out merch. I think it's telling us to click on a merchant. Did that do it? Oh, one of one. Haha, -ha, cool. Yeah, I think it's telling us to click on a merchant, but not kill it. Anyways, here's our key. So which way do I want to expand is the question. Um, let's expand this way. So, yoink. And uh, hmm. 
I wonder, how do the storage in these boxes work? I can break this without losing items, right? So, uh, right now I have more than 2,500 spare items. If I break this, the items aren't actually stored in the box, are they? Yeah, I didn't lose a single item. I'm curious what happens if I break another box, but I'd rather test it before I actually did it. Alright, cool. So that makes it easier for us to walk past here. I'll, uh, eh, this is fine. We now have another room to do things. And maybe I'll try to move all our merchants there or something. Let's set up an area over in this new room to store our villagers. My plan is to have uh, this basic system here where uh, I can walk in and out, but I don't think villagers will try hard enough to walk out. I might need the higher tier factor plate to make this really reliable, but generally speaking, as long as the villagers all stay over there, I'm content. So I just need a way to move them. Uh, I would love to just move them with a moving wand, but uh, yeah, I can't capture them with that. Um, well, that's to take blocks, right? There's a different wand for entities, I think. Yeah, the capturing wand is for entities, but even this, uh, let's see. Oh, it's left click on a creature to capture it. Oh, it does work. It just punches them once in the process. All right, well, that's fine then. Um, and then I can just posit them here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was thinking about buying one of like the other items I can try to move mobs, but if I can just do it like this, this will work. Uh, now I can put all of our villagers here and they won't be, you know, in our way. One last project for today, let's see about making a weirding gadget or two. These are 3x3 three three chunk loaders, um, and, you know, we can use them so that if we put one, like, here in our base, it'll, uh, run our sifters, our, si our strainers, even when we're offline. So um, now that we have access to alloys and stuff, I don't think it's that difficult. It takes a bit of bronze, signalum, and steel, but uh, all three are pretty easy to make. First off, bronze in the alloy kiln. Steel can come from our blast furnace, from which we have plenty. In fact, maybe we can even turn some of it in for that quest. How much we get for it? For 128 coal coke and steel? Yeah, sure. Two stacks of each. Can get 200 bucks. Is it worth it? Who knows? Each one of these can load a 3x3 three three chunk area. Unfortunately, chunk loading the mob farm won't make it work because they're, you know, natural mob spawns, so they require a player nearby. However, uh, at the very least, we can, you know, like our tree farm and, and our sieves, whatever will work. So let me find a good place to put these. I guess if we load this chunk, this will be somewhat central. And uh, it goes three by So I guess that one chunk loader gets everything short of the mob farm and no point chunk loading the mob farm. So I'll hang on to this one for later. And to wrap things up for today, let's open the one chest that I found out exploring. Eh, TNT, sure, why not? Um, in any event, that's all I've got for now. We'll come back tomorrow and do more progression. Today was a very, you know, light on progression, but we got a lot of uh, organizational things done, which is equally as important. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.